Thanks again to the canon information from the Avatar Legends role-playing game, we now have new information about a location that hasn't yet appeared in the shows, comics, or books. A location that was coveted by not only the Fire Nation, but the Earth Kingdom as well. But it was actually the Water Tribes that call this location a spiritual home of their own. Let's dive in and examine this new location and the conflict it stirred among the three most militant nations of the Avatar world. Hey folks, my name is Antoine, your resident geek, and today we'll be diving into the all-new location, Natsuo Island of the Fire Nation. Or actually, maybe it belongs to the Water Tribes. Well, if you ask the Earth Kingdom, they would say something else entirely. Uh, it's a bit complicated. More on that later. As a note, all information from this point on is coming within a four-year period in the Avatar timeline between Fire Lord Sozin's coronation in 58 BG, before the Airbender Genocide, to Avatar Roku's wedding in 54 BG. And of course, this is all sourced from the canon Avatar Legends role-playing game. If you want to stay up to date as I go through my coverage of all the new lore, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. What really got me into this topic initially was in finding out that this new island was actually a central meeting location between the southern and northern water tribes. For thousands of years, any severe disputes between the two tribes were brought to this island. Even during times of peace and non-conflicts, members of both tribes would travel to the island for spiritual reflection or a time to pay general respects to the land for all the times it served as a mediator. It was during one of these trips that the southern chief named Tana discovered that the Water Tribe's holy island was being occupied by Fire Nation forces. And, through his political connections, Chief Skiri of the North- Oh my god. Chief Skiri? 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 I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, but Chief Skiri of the North learns about the Fire Nation occupation and immediately wants to send his fleet to reclaim the sacred island. But he'll need support from his kin in the South. But the tribes down under are hesitant on starting an all-out war with the Fire Nation over such a small plot of land. What the Water Tribes called their sacred island wasn't just central to them. The island also lied perfectly between the Fire Nation and the Earth Kingdom, and to the latter nation, the landmass was known as Natsuo Island. Because of the island's close proximity to the Fire Islands and the Western Earth Kingdom, both governments never laid claim to it, but once the Fire Nation found large deposits of ore on the island, that all changed. Thanks to Roku's era being a time of prosperity, the Fire Nation made great industrial progress, and a lot of that industry was built on the back of ore. The Earth King knows that Sozin's posturing serves his nation's growing industry, not his people, as Sozin claims, and is not willing to let the Fire Nation have the island without opposition. And if the Earth King goads Sozin into making the first move towards aggression, even better. To that end, the Earth King has sent a few military vessels on training exercises just off the island's coast and waits to see Sozin's next move. So, during this time, there are three nations with personal interest in the same location. But why? How did it get to be like this? Why did the Fire Nation come to occupy this island? After all, Sozin put up the farce that the occupation of the island was to safeguard his people, not to seize natural resources. But why would Fire Nation citizens have to move to the island at all? Well, it was actually Avatar Roku's fault. In the Escape from the Spirit World online game, while Aang was between life and death, Aang explains his extreme shame at failing to master the Avatar state to Avatar Roku's spirit. However, Avatar Roku consoles him, explaining that he too had problems with mastering the Avatar state. He tells of how he unsuccessfully attempted to master the state by learning from the Fire Sage Koja, grandfather to Fire Sage Shiyu, who helped Aang during the Winter Solstice arc in the Book 1 of The Last Airbender. Avatar Roku's impatience urged him to seek out other ways to master the Avatar state, and his plan involved harnessing energy from the sun during one of the Winter Solstices of his time. On the day of that solstice, he aligned his eyes with a beam of light coming from the sun, just like Aang did. The method initially proved to be successful, but Roku was stuck in the Avatar state as a result of the overwhelming power he received. He ended up destroying the top half of the Avatar temple on Crescent Island. What's more, 
Roku activated the dormant volcano of the island, which caused seismic instability in the surrounding islands. Since that disastrous day, Fire Nation citizens have been rebuilding and Avatar Roku is regularly seen around these islands when he has a moment to spare from his normal duties, mostly to also help rebuild. People on these islands are desperate to rebuild some of the stability they had in their previous lives, but so much was ruined and living near Crescent Island is a dangerous affair, which Avatar Roku becomes intimately familiar with in a few years' time. Fire Lord Sozin capitalizes on this not-so-natural, natural disaster, blaming the Earth Kingdom for the new seismic activity instead of his friend, Avatar Roku. We see a similar blame game happening up in the north between the Northern Water Tribes and the Northern Earth Kingdom surrounding the port city of Chin Bao, which I'll get into in another video. In any case, the citizens of the Fire Nations don't have any reason to disbelieve their Fire Lord, plus it's much easier for the people of the islands to blame the Earth Kingdom for their problems rather than looking too deeply at what their own nation is or isn't doing for them. Instead, people blame the Earth Kingdom's lack of support and their greedy claim to Natsuo Island. Therefore, Fire Lord Sozin claims that the island is part of the Fire Nation and that the citizens of the Fire Nation need the island after the Crescent Island disaster, making what was once a neutral island a hotbed for potential conflict between three of the largest and most destructive nations. And that's it! In the next video in this series, we'll continue taking a deeper look at the Fire Nation and what it was up to during Roku's era, and the interplay between the nobility, military, and spiritualists. And tell me what was the most interesting bit of information you discovered in this video. Do you think that Natsuo Island should have been neutral? Did it rightfully belong to the Water Tribes? Or did the Fire Nation have valid claims for their expansion due to previous disasters? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll catch you on the next one, and as always, peace, love, and remember, be water, my friends.